Here's an example of a static equilibrium problem. We have a traffic light hanging from two cables that are connected at different angles. And so there's the traffic light. And we'll say the traffic light is, um, let's say it's 80 newtons. I have a cable here. Uh, we'll call that cable one. And we'll call that cable two over there. Technically, this would be cable three over here. We'll, we'll consider it as cable three. Now, this is um, good if you're in civil service. You have to calc civil um, engineering. You can... Um, you would be calculating uh, these kind of numbers for a traffic light hanging across a road, for instance. Let's say this angle is 50 degrees, and let's say this angle is 35 degrees up there. Well, uh, we want to find the, the objective is to find the tension in the cables, in both in tension in cables one and two in cable one and two and that's our objective from this essentially what we want to do is calculate the forces about this point right here because we're going to have a tension one going up a tension two going up to the right and tension three pulling down let's just take a quick look at the free body diagram of the traffic light here's the traffic light it has a weight of 80 newtons, and the cable pulling up on it is our cable number three, so tension three. That means this red dot here, this red dot, is going to be the focal point of all our forces. And we're going to have a tension three that corresponds to the downward pull of the traffic light, which is simply going to be 80 newtons. It's pretty simple. It's not moving. It's not accelerating. It's stationary. That's why these are called static equilibrium cases, kind of like paintings on a wall or, um, or signs on a building, fixed signs. Well, that's our tension one going down. Let me just erase this line here a little bit. Um, we do have a cable going up, so this is going to be tension one going up here like that. That's going to be tension one. And then, you know, reset, get that out of the way. And then we have the other cable at the slightly shallower angle. That's going to be our tension two. Now, technically, that's, uh, that, that is the three forces acting on the object. However, we have to, in order to analyze this, we have to break these down into x and y directions. And to do that, uh, we're going to use the angles that you see up at the top left in the diagram. In fact, looking at those angles, let's just take that out of the way. Looking at those angles, what's this angle here? And if you said 35 degrees, you would be correct. That's 35 degrees. Likewise, what's that angle here? That angle would be 50 degrees. That angle is 50. So knowing that, we can form our right triangles like this. We can form our right triangles. This would be 35 degrees here. This would be 50 degrees here. Now, why do we want to do that? Well, because we can see that this is... T2 is pulling up and to the right. So there's the up part of it. This is going to be T2Y. And to the right, this is going to be to the right part of it. This is the T2X part. Those are two vectors, if you want to consider it. They're perpendicular to each other. Um, vector T2X plus vector T2Y gives you vector T2. Likewise, I have T1X pulling to the left. T1 is pulling up and to the left. And so T1Y would be given by this. Now you can see what we can do here. <clears throat> we can form sines and cosines uh, using uh, uh, T2 and T1 and the angle we know. Before we do that, though, let's see what we do with 
them the way they are, T1x. We actually have one piece of data here. We have that it's 80 newtons. That's the one force we have. It's going to be distributed based on those angles. So let's look at those <coughs> free body diagram of those angles. Uh, and uh, let's see what happens here. Um, let me erase this. I don't need that anymore. <coughs> We're going to sum the forces in the x and the y direction. Now, this is a one body problem, really. And so we're going to sum the forces in the x direction. And we're going to sum the forces in the y direction. <clears throat> and so the object is stationary. So therefore, the acceleration is 0. So we won't even bother writing in uh, ma there because we know it's 0. Let's look at the forces acting in the x direction. From the diagram, let's take another quick look at this diagram here. Here's my pivot point right here in the cable. I have, T, I have T3 going down, which is 80 newtons. I have T1x going this way. I have T2x going this way. I have T2y pulling up and T1y pulling up. We have five different, we've broken it up into five forces. If you look at that diagram, which are the forces that are actually supplying the 80 newton Counterforce, T1 and T2. Those are the two um, force components that are actually holding the object up. T1x and T2x are not. They're just contributed to the side forces. So when I sum the forces in the x direction, I can immediately look at that diagram, and I see that it's going to be T2x minus T1x is going to equal 0, or T2x equals T1x, which is about as far as I can go for now. In the y direction, I can look at the diagram on the left or the right, and you can see that the two upward forces are going to be T1y plus T2y, and the one downward force is going to be 80, and that's going to equal 0. So I can write T1y plus T2y equals 80. Now, I have too, way too many unknowns here. I've got four unknowns. I've got T1x, T2x, T1y, and T2y. I can eliminate them. How? I can eliminate some of those objects by using trig on the triangle you see up there. So let's look at that briefly before I continue. Uh, T1y, the cosine of, or I should say the sine of 50 degrees, is going to equal the opposite, which is that up there in the diagram. T1y over the hypotenuse, T1. Therefore, T1y is going to equal T1 times the sine of 50 degrees. I can use the same logic to write T2y is going to equal T2 times the sine of, what do we say, 35 degrees. Uh, so now I'm getting somewhere. Now I can write in that T1y, using this equation here, I can write T, instead of T1y, I can write T1 times the sine of 50, plus, instead of writing T2y, I can write T2 times the sine of 35 degrees. Now I've reduced my unknowns to just 2 in this equation, T1 and T2, and I can do the same with the x. Um, let's first put in the sine of 50 degrees, which is 0.77 T1. I'm rounding off here. And the sine of 35 is plus 0.57 T2 equals 80. So I don't have to worry about those numbers. Well, I'm still stuck with two unknowns in that equation, however. How can I get rid of one of the unknowns? Well, I can do that by using the T2x and the T1x. Just as I did before, we can see that the cosine of 50 degrees is going to equal the adjacent T1x over the hypotenuse, or T1x is going to equal T1 times the cosine of 50. And with the same logic, I can write T2x is going to equal T2 times the cosine of 35. 
So what I get then is, let me just extend the page a little bit. I get from this equation, I now get T2 times the cosine of 35 equaling T1 times the cosine of 50. I can put real numbers in there. So this becomes the cosine of 35 is 0 0.82 T2 and the cosine of 50 is 0 0.64 T1 or T2 equals 0 0.64 T1 divided by 0 0.82. Not difficult, it's just a bit tedious. So 0 0.64 divided by 0 0.82 gives me 0 0.78 T1. Now I have a value for T2 that I can then substitute in here. In doing that, I get 0 0.77 T1 plus 0 0.57 times 0 0.78 T1 equals 80. Now it's just a matter of simple algebra, as long as you calculate it out properly. So 0 0.57 times 0 0.78 equals 0 0.44 T1 equals 80. And I get 0.44 plus 0.77 gives me 1.21 T1 equals 80. And T1 equals 80 divided by 1.21. Or T1 equals, let's see, 80 divided by 1.21 is uh, 66, roughly, rounding it off, newtons. So T1 equals 66 newtons. You can substitute that into here to find a value for T2. And I'm way over time, so that's it.